Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandomy things. So today I have a book haul. I haven't done a book haul in a while but it obviously was just Christmas so I was gifted books and I also went on a book crawl in a place called Hay on Y in England where I bought a lot of books. So I wanted to share those with you guys. So the first book that I got is actually three books. It's a series and that is the his Dark Material series by Philip Pullman. I have this series on my Kindle and I read it a few years ago now on my Kindle and obviously the show came out at the end of last year on BBC and I absolutely loved it. Lin Manuel Miranda as Lee Scoresby was perfect and I was in love with the show and I wanted to reread these books and finally get myself some really nice copies and because the show came out they re-released the hardbacks in these really really gorgeous versions that are like the volumes, volume one, volume two, volume three. So we have Northern Lights, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass, obviously all by Philip Pullman. This series focuses on Lyra who lives in a world where everybody has their uh, their own demon and um, which is like a little animal which is connected to them and she lives in her own version of Oxford and children start to go missing and they're not really sure why and then Lyra finds herself involved with everything that's going on and trying to find the mystery of where these children have gone because her best friend Roger ends up going missing as well. It's a really 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 fantastic series. I adore these and I'm so so excited to give them a reread this year. And then for Christmas I got Everything Begins and Ends at the Kentucky Club by Benjamin O'Leary Sands and it is a bunch of short stories about the Kentucky Club. And for those that don't know Benjamin O'Leary Sands is one of my all-time favourite authors. He wrote my all-time favourite book Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe and this is one of his adult books that I hadn't owned or read yet so I was really happy to get it for Christmas. And talking about Aristotle and Dante I actually got two versions of Aaron and Dante recently. I do have another edition coming in the post but it's coming from America. I don't know how long it's going to take but that edition is actually a signed edition from Benjamin O'Leary Sands' website so I'm absolutely buzzed for that. But I got this version off of a books. It's second hand but it is a first edition one. It's super shiny. It doesn't have the awards on the cover. Just this one which is not um it's not like it's not printed on the cover you can feel that it's hard and it's kind of on there differently and then I got this edition which is the Spanish edition and I collect my favorite books in languages that I can understand so I'm currently actually learning Spanish um, which is super fun and I'm having an amazing time learning it so I wanted to get this one in Spanish and also it is a beautiful cover I don't have a copy where the cover is the complete cover like this but yeah I'm currently learning Spanish it's really fun I really like it um, but yeah so I ended up getting <laughs> two extra copies of Ari and Dante uh, because it is my favorite book and I do collect copies of it but yes read this book please it's wonderful. Then I got another series the Chaos Walking series by Patrick Ness so we have the Knife of Never Letting Go, we have the Ask and the Answer and Monsters of Men and this series focuses on Prentice Town where everyone can hear each other's thoughts then Todd Hewitt stumbles across a place where there is complete silence and now he has to go on the run because that's not something that he's supposed to experience and it's everything from there. I've wanted to read this series for a while it is going to be a film they have filmed it I believe. I don't think they're still filming. I think they've finished recently. So I wanted to read the series before I saw the film but yeah so I ended up getting this as well. I got this from the book crawl and the second and third but were like £4 each and this one was £5 and they're like brand new so hey and why the best place for books honestly honestly. Then my sister-in-law for Christmas got me Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody. This book has been on my wish list for a very long time and I have wanted to read it for the longest time so I was really really happy when I opened it on Christmas Day. And this is a series but I just have the first book and this focuses on 16 year old Serena who is part of a travelling circus and she can create illusions that people can see and touch and feel 
and she just has always assumed that these illusions are illusions until one day one of those illusions is murdered and everything that she thought kind of gets flipped and now she has to figure out what's going on and trying to figure out the truth behind what's happened and where her powers come from and who's doing this. Like I said I've wanted to read this for the longest time I'm really really excited to have finally got a copy and I'm planning on starting this series this year. Then I got The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzag. I have I've never read the book Thief and when I tell people that they look at me in shock but no I never actually got around to picking this book up. This book is set in the time of World War II in Nazi Germany and from what I know the perspective of the book it is from the perspective of death and that's all I really know about it other than the fact that everyone tells me that I should read it and that I'd really enjoy it so this is definitely also going to be one that I read this year too and that I finally get around to so that all my friends stop judging me for never reading this book. <laughs> and we have The House on Vesper Sands by Parik O'Donnell. This book is set in Victorian England and women are mysteriously vanishing and there's rumours going around about this gang that could potentially be involved. It focuses on Gideon who sets out to find the love of his life and while all of this is happening a seamstress jumps to her death with a very peculiar message carved into her skin and it's everything un that unfolds from there and the mystery of that and everything that's going on. I'm really into historical fiction at the minute, I've been reading quite a lot of it. I've also been reading a lot of historical non-fiction and I'm just really into it at the minute. I don't really know where it's sort of come from but this is one that I got as well from here on why my friend recommended it to me so I'm really really excited to start it. Then I also got on my Kindle Blood Defence by Marsha Clark. Now some people might recognise the name Marsha Clark. Marsha Clark was actually on the prosecution team when the OJ Simpson trial was happening and I got Blood Defence by her which is a fiction novel focuses on Sam who is a lawyer and she has been given the task to defend someone who very much seems innocent but there's lots going on behind it and I really enjoyed it. I've read this one because it is focuses from the perspective of the lawyers rather than the people that the crimes are happening to which I haven't read a lot of books like that so I really enjoyed it but she also wrote a non-fiction book called Without a Doubt which is which focuses on the OJ trial which I've also got as well and yeah Marge Clark was on that team. I was not born when the O.J. Simpson trial happened, it was literally a year before I was born, but I watched The People vs. O.J. Simpson recently because it's now on Netflix and I watched it and I didn't know masses of, of the trial, I'd seen a couple of true crime documentaries and videos about it and from what I could gather he definitely sh was guilty. But I watched The People vs. O.J. Simpson and then I watched some actual real court footage and some real information on it and the whole case is incredibly it's it's baffling it's terrifying that the defense were able to get him off on the grounds that the LAPD were racist and that the LAPD were so known to be racist that that worked but also it's such a shame that DNA evidence was not massively known or understood because it, he so obviously did it so I bought without a doubt because I wanted to read that and then I saw she also did fiction novels as well so I wanted to read some of her fiction novels and like I said I read Blood Defence and I really really liked it and I'm going to read without a doubt. I also discovered in this time that OJ Simpson has a book called If I Did It and the proceeds I think it originally went to him the money but then people were like what the hell rightly so because he shouldn't be making any money off of it so now the money from the books goes to Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown's family and there's a new preface and other information in in the book as well and it is essentially his hypothetical account of if he did if he did it what would have happened and I've read bits of it I've seen bits of it it's essentially a confession and it's terrifying and the whole case like from a psycho psychology perspective which is my area of study and what I've studied for the past how many years of my life it's slightly terrifying that he like yeah he's just yeah it's an interesting but yeah so absolutely not an okay guy but yeah Marsha Clark is actually a really good author, a uh, fiction author, and I'm going to start without a doubt 
soon as well. Then we have The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky by Mackenzie Lee. This is the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue 1.5, the Montague Siblings series, which is a tr going to be a trilogy. There's The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and The Lady's Guide to Two Etiquettes and Piracy. And then next year, The Nobleman's Guide to Something and Something. I can't remember comes out and it's one of my favourite series ever. I'm buzzed. This is book 1.5 that sits in between Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and Ladies Guide. This focuses on Monty and Percy after the events of the first book. If you don't know about the De Montague sibling series, it's set in the 1700s. focuses on Monty who is, his father is a lord, he's supposed to be taking over the family estate but Monty doesn't want to do that. He is bisexual, he's in love with his best friend Percy, his dad does not approve of the fact that Monty also likes men and he's about to embark on his gentleman's tour of Europe before taking over the family estate but things do not go quite well on Monty's tour of Europe and it's everything that unfolds from there. I love the series it's absolutely amazing and I was buzzed that this finally came out as well. Then I got The Colour Purple by Alice Walker which I've never read and everyone tells me that I should read it and I don't know massively too much about it. I know it focuses on a girl called Celie and she, it's kind of her moving on from her really really horrible past and everything that she's been dealing with. She's been assaulted multiple times by the man that she calls father and ends up actually birthing two children because of that. She ends up finding Shug Avery who is a woman who's taken control of her life and it's Celie taking that control back and ha focusing on her future and, and dealing with her past and becoming stronger and everything that unfolds from there. It's set in the south of America and it focuses a lot on segregation and the poverty that CD has and I've been told many 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 a time that I should read this book and how so important and good this book is so I finally got it and it looks like it sounds like it's going to be a really really hard read and very serious so please look at any triggers that might that might be in it if you do decide you want to read it but I've heard nothing but good things about it so I finally got it. Then we have Orpheus Girl by Bryn Rebel Henry and this book focuses on Rhea who is 16 years old and lives with her grandmother in Texas and she is obsessed with ancientness and she's also in love with her best friend Sarah but has to keep that a secret. Get outed and get sent to a conversion therapy camp to fix them. When she gets there, Rhea decides that she is going to take on the role of Orpheus and it is essentially a retelling of the Orpheus story and myth. Having this means that Rhea is so determined to escape and not be stuck in this place where there are horrible treatments and these people are treated awfully just because they are not heterosexual and this therapy is determined to turn them straight, which obviously doesn't happen. I have spoken out a lot before about conversion therapy and how disgusted it makes me and how even more disgusted it makes me that it still exists to this day in some places and that it is still illegal to even be gay in so many places and that this type of therapy is a thing. I hate it. I've been told this book is incredibly important, incredibly amazing, which is why I ended up picking it up. Again, I think it's one where I just tried caution with it in regards to triggers and things that could upset you, but I'm really looking forward to reading it because I've just been told that it's so, so, so important. And then finally, I have Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi, and this is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone, which came out in 2018. I loved Children of Blood and Bone when it came out, absolutely adored it, one of the best books I read. So so this is one which I'm going to read this year. I think I'm going to reread Children of Blood and Bone at the like beforehand as well because it is quite big. There's lots of information and I have only read it once. But yeah, I love this version. Look at the pages. It's gorgeous. And it was actually oh, and it has a map. We love a book with a map. And I was really lucky and ended up getting a signed version as well from Waterstone. So yeah, that was my last book on this list. So yes, that was my most recent book haul. You can blame Christmas and Hair and Wife for that situation. 
I obviously, if you saw my first video of the year, my organising my book, I spoke about how I am planning on reading lots of books that were on my shelves this year rather than buying lots of books. So I think this will be my last book haul for a while because I'm not planning on buying them as much as I used to because I really want to get through all the books that I have first. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. It was a very big one. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you are new here, then I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandomy things. So if you want to stick around and join us, then you can do that. And as usual, all the links to all my other social social medias are in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you're all doing really 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 well and I will see you next time. Goodbye!